刻。Thanks to anime becoming more mainstream, more and more people have become more open and accepting of the medium, and that's allowed them to enjoy this form of entertainment that's touched so many people in different ways. You know, back in my younger days, you'd be hard pressed to find a lot of people who treated anime seriously, brushing them off as just cartoons, when it can actually be such a powerful medium in so many ways. That's why for today, I want to go a little bit edgier than the usual PG-13 content. How about pushing the list to 20 for today and talking about what I think are my top 20 action anime that are more mature? I'm talking about something that could, uh, if it hasn't already, pass as R-rated, or while examining themes that may be quite deep, owing to the strength of anime as a storytelling medium. Keep in mind, though, I'm not going to be including any anime that I've included in my top 20 shonen video, just to keep it a little bit fresh. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Right off the bat, then, I want to talk about Golden Kamui. Golden Car Movie really doesn't lend itself much to seem like one of the first names in your mind when talking about mature anime. It's not particularly violent, it doesn't have any mind-blowing themes or the like, but I don't think anyone can just stumble into this historical wartime drama and enjoy it as easily as, say, the mainstream shonen hits. Golden Car Movie takes things rather deliberately, sticking to its historical fiction roots and its story of war and survival. Despite that statement making Golden Gun Movie seem like a moody, dramatic show, it does have its light-hearted moments as well, you know. Just as how life is full of different spices, Golden Gun Movie explores history and Ainu culture in a way that both showcases the gritty aspects of survival, as well as heavier themes like PTSD, while showing off the comedic and whimsical aspects of a culture that seems so far and different from our own. Golden Gun Movie captures the mood of what I pretty much envision this list to contain, and I think the historical fiction is a good way to kick things off for this list. <laughs> Up next we have a movie series, Garden of Sinners. When we talk Nasu, when we talk Tyke Moon, everyone thinks of the Fate series. But don't worry, we're going to get to that one soon. First though, I'd like to detour to a series of movies that I feel deserves a little bit more love. Garden of Sinners. Now if you've been a fan of Fate, specifically the mainline series with Shiro, Sabre, Rin and the like, you'll find yourself at home in Garden of Sinners. It's the same universe and all, but that's not all. This film series really gives off the same urban fantasy atmosphere with its slew of tragic characters, quite the emphasis on dialogue, and an overall gloomy mood supported by magic. While the Fate series is more known for the fights and the crazy noble phantasms and the grand moments, Garden of Sinners does have a more muted approach to things. It's got action, but it's overall something more philosophical and has mystery to it too. Heck, the movies themselves will require the viewers to do a little bit of detective work since they're not released in chronological order too. Regardless of that, it constitutes as part of the charm of it all, and Garden of Sinners is a series that will really make you look inward and ponder about things for a bit before it blasts you with some brilliant artwork and animation as expected from a set of UFO table films. Before we continue, I want to bring you the best type of Japanese confectionery right at your fingertips. This video sponsors Tokyo Tree and Sakurako are two subscription boxes that aim to bring you some of the best in Japanese snacks and sweets, all in the comforts of your home. With Tokyo Tree, you get up to 20 exclusive limited edition and seasonal Japanese snacks. And for February, love is in the air as Tokyo Tree presents its Valentine's box with an assortment of flavors ranging from karai spicy ramen, sour plum chips to lucky daifuku kitkat there's bound to be something for your precious one's taste buds. If you think the old school is cool and you fancy the more traditional for your loved ones, say the more artisan types of snacks, then we have Sakurako for you. Sakurako, in contrast to Tokyo Tree, offers snacks more along the lines of good old Japanese tea, mochi and provincial exclusives. This time Sakurako is partnering with the ever lively Osaka area to bring you its very own take on Valentine's. I'm talking chocolate mochi, strawberry dorayaki and much more. Of course Sakurako boxes come with their kitchenware and this month you'll be getting this pretty soup bowl. It's very handy, don't you think? Don't forget to use the code VINNY and get $5 off your first box. You can't get a better Japanese experience in the comfort of your own home than this, so don't forget to grab this opportunity. From Magic Fantasy, we move on to Sci-Fi now with Vivi. ReZero was a hard show to classify. I feel it could count for this list and it has action, but I feel it's really more of a thriller mystery with the fights just being extra spice. However, what does feel more action dominated is Tape Nagatsuki's other work, Vivi. 
I wasn't sure what to make of Vivi before watching it, you know? I was excited for it, sure, because I like ReZero and want more from the same creator, and I like my action girls and sci-fi, but besides that, there wasn't much in the way of expectations. When it was all said and done, what I witnessed can be summed up as one of the best that 2021 had to offer. Vivi is a show that's simply filled with astounding action sequences, has an amazing soundtrack, and is overall just a spectacle. Something you'd expect out of a theatrical production, except this is a sci-fi TV series that also doubles as a rather dark thriller as expected of the author. All the while, it differentiates itself enough from the shows with similarities like Stein's Gate. The world of Vivi is easy to get acclimated to. It's got some quirky characters to root for, and it's quick for the show to take you by the reins and just strap you in for the ride. A ride that's very thematically beautiful. I know what you're thinking, but Vinny, none of those are real mature. You know, the kind with the violence and the blood and the stuff edgy teenage boys absolutely lap up. Well then, here's Helsing Ultima for you. Ah, Helsing. These kinds of shows never go out of favour, especially if you look at the pre-season hype for Chainsaw Man. You know, brutal, violent affairs with the main character There's all sorts of badass in battle. While Chainsaw Man incorporates some modern elements of anime characters in Denji, like the Pervasion, Alucard is all business. Oh, and he's way more overpowered too, actually. Back in the 2000s, Alucard is pretty much the embodiment of the badass flavor of that era, and his conquests were a thing of legend amongst anime fans. Helsing's a ride that's just full of thrills and jaw-dropping action. High octane, fast and furious. If you're out for an adrenaline rush, and want to take a look at a representation of a relatively recently bygone era, Helsing Ultimate could be the pick for you. They just don't do shows like this anymore now, don't you think? If you want a similar fare but in the form of a movie, how about Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust? We take on another action vampire title here, a movie this time though. Vampire Hunter D is a dark fantasy film that came out in the year 2000 as a much anticipated follow up to the 1985 film. The series has had its time in the limelight back then and was one of the most popular fantasy franchises at some point. Bloodlust now, the second film, has received a lot of praise for its excellence in animation and sound direction, all the while having an art style that showed how the franchise never missed a beat despite over a decade gap between the films. You want action? You want horror, and you want it all compressed in a film that you can easily just hop into and enjoy? Well, Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust could be your jam. It's also pretty nice that you don't have to be a fan to enjoy the movie. You can just hop in and you'll have yourself a fun time, even if you've got no clue whatsoever about the franchise coming in. Vampire Hunter D was widely praised for its animation at the time, which is a fitting statement to mention because the next title I want to feature also felt like a pioneer for its time too, Arjin. <laughs> CG in anime is nothing new, even when Arjun came out. However, it seems that it was around the 2010s when the anime industry really started to embrace CG. Not in short bursts or some characters like idol shows, but full CG I'm talking about. That's the first thing that strikes out when you take a single look at Arjun, much like Knights of Sidonia or Arpeggio of Blue Steel before it. But that's not all there is in this series. It's an action series where the fights are good but also tactical. It's also got a dark backdrop that has a sprinkling of philosophy and morality. It's a pretty gloomy and cynical series that helps us examine our roles in relation to the world around us and its denizens. While I'm not perpetrating that you take anything that these cynical shows teach us about the world as gospel, it does make you think a bit, doesn't it, given that this is a show that's for the more mature audiences to fully appreciate. It's something worth your time, provided you remove any prejudice with regards to CG anime. Overall, it's one of the meaningful edgy shows out there, if you will. <laughs> Next up is Bungo Stray Dogs. Now, Bungo Stray Dogs is unique. It does the historical fiction thing and applies it to authors, making this a sure home run for the bibliophile side of the anime community, all while wrapping it up in an enjoyable mystery action series that just keeps on getting better. This series turned out to be one of the underrated gems of the 2010s. This seinen isn't unpopular by any means, with merchandise aplenty in season after season, but it does seem that people talk about it in too high regard. However, I think that's got more to do with the target demographic and how the overall approach of the series doesn't lend itself to a lot of crazy, overpowered moves that break the internet. Then again, nor does it open itself up to a lot of those who would win debates that breathe life into Battle Shonen. That's why I called Bungo Stray Dogs underrated. For the amount of traction it got, 
It has all the ways to keep up with the big seasonal hits with its great balance of comedy, mystery and action. In fact, I still have the final fight of the season ranked up high in there as one of my favourite final battles to an arc. You do have to know though that this show is an investment in time. It takes quite a while to ramp up, but when it does, the arc climaxes are simply rewarding. Okay, so it's time for a video game adaptation to grace the list now with Cyberpunk Edge Runners. With a lot of video game adaptations stepping up recently, it's not surprising that Cyberpunk Edge Runners ended up being the way it did. We already got a glimpse of the potential of the more mainstream, more normy game worlds being turned into series with Arcane, and Cyberpunk Edge Runners builds on that momentum quite a bit actually. While we got a lot of these Cyberpunk titles focusing more on the implications of technology intertwining with humanity, Cyberpunk Edge Runners decides to go the other way and relish in the technology, the explosions, and the flashiness of it all. Rule of cool, as they say. With that being said, it's not that the show is some dumb action flick or something like that. It's quite the opposite, actually, and you get that once you reach the midway point. Still, it's pretty much the versatility of it that makes such a popular series that's attracted fans from all sides of the spectrum. Those who love their explosions and those who love their mature themes. We'll move on from one sci-fi hit to another, the ever-popular Psycho Pass. Psycho Pass reflects a world that's become closer to our own by the day. For something that came out in the early 2010s, it sure did quite a hell of a job for telling the future, for better or worse. This is a utopian world where people's thoughts and reason have been integrated into the Sybil system, a means of objectively quantifying someone's inclination to crime and determining a citizen's threat level. We follow Akane Tsunomori and Shinya Kogami, a duo who, in their quest to uphold justice, begin uncovering the Sybil system for what it really is. Perhaps in this world, such an objective system, an almost dystopian one, could actually be flawed and corrupt. Released in 2012, Psycho Pass continues Gen Urobuchi's role of masterful writing following both Fate Zero and Madoka Magica as it examines some hard-hitting questions like what justice really is. Truly, it's something that's become more pronounced in the recent news cycle, and it's amazing how an anime from a decade ago can still speak to us on this level. Great action. A lot of questions in the backdrop for us to answer, and an exhilarating pace makes Psycho Pass a winner in my book. Okay. Coming in as the 10th entry on the list is Summertime Render. We've had time travel and time loop stories in anime aplenty. However, I think that few of them have captured the mystery aspect and integrated it with such high octane action as perfectly as Summertime Render did. Sure, the thing turned into an action thriller at the halfway point, but it never lost sight of its roots as it started out as a murder mystery. Even when the tone shifted to the humans fighting back as more secrets were unraveled and more mysteries kept getting thrown at you, and the best part of it is that you feel like you've got an active role in finding the clues and coming up with the theories. There's so much involvement with Summertime Render's mystery and there's a real connection that gets formed with the characters and the audience. Everything caps off with one insane action finale that could put some purely action shows to shame and you get an ending that truly feels earned. I'm not going to elaborate any further on this one and I'll just do the best thing I can do and tell you to watch it. Seriously, it's an anime of the year contender for 2022. And if you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. If we've talked about cyberpunk, then why not Ghost in the Shell? Yet how can we leave out one of the originators of the genre in terms of anime? As I mentioned a while ago, Cyberpunk Edge Runners is the one that relishes in the cool factor of sci-fi. Meanwhile, Ghost in the Shell, while having no shortage of action, has a more meek and serious approach to things. Sure, the fighting and the excitement are there, with this being a show featuring special ops, hackers, and a lot of what you can call the staples of the genre. But I feel that Ghost in the Shell really shines in the complexity of its story. Yeah, I'd say that it takes on a more reflective, you know, a more mature look at it in order to fully appreciate what the series has to offer. Yes, you can enjoy it as an action show, but I feel that the message would be incomplete without looking at the themes in depth, the dialogue and the like. Ghost in the Shell is a classic that's held up even to this day. One of the pioneers in the genre, it wouldn't hurt to give it a watch and see how it influenced the sub-genre even to this day. An isekai hit makes the list now, and it's Mushoku Tensei. <laughs> 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 
Now, I did say in the introduction that I was going to mostly avoid anime that are classified as mature by the way of the more sexual themes, but I think we can give Mushoku Tensei a slight pass here now, can't we? After all, with a show as influential as this and as solid in terms of world building and character growth, how can it not be one of the top recommendations here? And it's not like it's simply a popcorn fest with simplistic arcs like a lot more of the fan service he shows in the other isekai. There's a reason why Mushoku Tensei has stood the test of time and retained a good reputation in the anime sphere, at least to those who didn't mind its questionable themes. So with that being said, Mushoku Tensei isn't a show for everyone. Like I said, it did influence the isekai genre, and that includes pretty much everything. Stuff that people love the genre for, and stuff that are easy bait for detractors to pile on. You get the complete package with Mushoku Tensei, but brave the elements and you'll find an ambitious story of growth and adventure set in one of the more wonderful worlds crafted in modern Japanese fiction. My shine. However, if you're up for carnage and find modern fantasy way too colourful and idealistic for your liking, then you might want to dive into the world of Berserk. In a way, you know, Berserk does feel like the antithesis of Mushoku Tensei and pretty much a lot of elements of modern anime that detractors cite. In Berserk, the show's violent and manly, and it's dark and cynical. So if you're up for a show that's edgy in that way, Berserk could be your calling. However, it's not all about the violence and the darkness in Berserk. After all, something that's only edge wouldn't stand the test of time as well as the series did. Berserk, for its time, is a masterpiece on the part of production. Great music, great voice acting, and a world that really fits its tune, all attached to a compelling story of a vagabond in search of revenge. Don't let the outdated art style fool you though. Berserk is truly one of the more mature anime that deserves to be labelled a classic. And make sure you do everyone a favour and watch the older ones. The 2016 one was very popular for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Right, now it's time for some mood whiplash again. From the dreary world of Berserk, we go to Heroville with One Punch Man. Granted, I feel that One Punch Man is a fringe example of a mature anime. It's classified as a seinen instead of a shonen, but its premise and its world lends itself to one of the many colourful universes that wouldn't look out of place in a jump shonen. If you're up for watching a parody anime, One Punch Man's the one to look out for because it goes beyond just parodying anime tropes. Setting the comedic tone aside, you'll find a wonderfully written show that deserves every bit of popularity that it's got. You know, for me, the most enjoyable part of One Punch Man is actually its cast of characters. The brilliant group of heroes and villains all make an impact in overt ways. It's easy to pick favourites because there are just so many characters to like and they easily make impressions that last even if their screen time is so minuscule in terms of anime standards. In between the action we also get a whole lot of memorable moments that get you both hyped and heartbroken one after another. And all of this is backed up with top tier animation and music so you've got yourself a winner. Bakano is up next and it's been a while since I've heard that name. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it if you told me that you've never watched Bakano. It's a niche anime that stood out with how it seemingly defied all those anime conventions back in the late 2000s, unorthodox. Like One Punch Man, Bakano's strength lies in its characters. Everyone from Isaac and Miria to Lad Russo all come with their own charms, and while some may lack in development due to the one core run of the show, they all remain charismatic and help carry the narrative that takes quite a while to get used to. They've all got their individual stories too, giving some of them ample development. Bakano feels weird, but in a good way. And it's not likely to be a show that can be enjoyed as much by the typical casual viewer. However, if you want to change your pace and watch something that looked unique and different from modern anime, then Bakano could be worth a shot. And how can we talk about Bakano without mentioning its cousin, Durarara? <laughs> <laughs> 
Same author, same storytelling style, same colourful ensemble of characters coming from the respective country's underworld. Durarara and Bakano are shows that seem inseparable in association. If you like one, you're probably going to like the other. In contrast to the muted tones of the Prohibition era, however, Durarara takes us to the bustling neighbourhood of Ikebukuro, where craziness seems to come every other moment. Durarara relies more on the rule of cool and is overall much bigger and louder, and I think that works to its benefit. It does seem to be the more attractive show to watch, and once you're in, you get treated to an unconventional narrative style rife with mature themes, and it's very rich in character arcs. While the question of whether the characters do develop is something that could spark debate, there's no question that they all make an impact. Durarara is a show that stands well enough alone, and it does have sequels to keep you occupied if you enjoyed the series. <laughs> Moving on now, we have Chainsaw Man. Ah yes, the definition of Hidesaw Man. It isn't hard to see why either actually, it's got a lot of things going for it. The dark plot, compelling characters, the mature themes, the violence in a level that's not typical of a jump series, the amazing production quality and the horror elements that glue people to their seats. From the outset, it carved out a niche for itself and it strongly caters to people in that niche. I don't think it had as strong as a reception as, say, the more traditional shonen like Demon Slayer or Jujutsu Kaisen because of how R18 it is, both in worldviews and themes and the actual visual content. Still, if you're in its target market and relish in what it brings to the table, the anime adaptation of Chainsaw Man is more than serviceable. If you want no-holes-barred, full-throttle action, all while keeping up with the modern anime community and what's hot, it's never too late to get started on Chainsaw Man. Body horror galore continues in this next show, Parasite. Ah, a classic indeed. Parasite ended up being one of my favourite shows in the mid-2010s, but it didn't seem that way at first, you know. I honestly didn't know what to make of this adaptation of a horror manga from the late 80s to early 90s, but I did get more than what I bargained for when I found myself lost in the gripping story, the non-stop action and the developing bond between man and host. Shinichi and Migi's bond is truly a beauty to watch develop, but Parasite also holds up really well with other themes as well. Sure, it can get a little bit preachy at times with its environmental implications and negative outlook on humans, but you can't help but think that those themes do make sense once you take a step back and take a look at the world as it is now. I also like how it stuck hard to those themes all the way to the end, giving us a show that has no shortage of action, but is also thematically consistent and strong. If you missed out on the show, I highly implore trying out Parasite. It fits in a very good narrative in the span of 24 episodes, and you'll definitely have a great time with it. As we approach the end of the list, I don't want to leave out my anime of the year for 2019, Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga, I think, is one of the most complete anime I've ever watched. And that's surprising, you know, coming from historical fiction, but it just has all the important elements of a show caught in a great balance. I'm talking action, world building, drama, complex characters, it's got it all. Vinland Saga is a show that I can truly recommend to people not into anime thanks to how mature and competent it is, yet it wouldn't prepare them for when they eventually hop into stuff like say isekai or cute girl slice of life or school anime, but for something that can ease these kinds of people into the medium, Vinland Saga would be it. Doubly so if the person's into history. Vinland Saga, while fictional for the most part of it, crafts a wonderful world that masterfully shows off what the world of Vikings was like back then. A cruel world, you know, filled with wars, drama and despair, but not one without hope as evident with the rich colours that fill up the landscapes of Europe. It's an engaging tale of survival that combines both action and a meaningful narrative of politics, love, war and redemption. Finally, let's end the list with another all-time favourite of mine, Fate Zero. The Fate series has gone through a lot of incarnations over the years. However, what I think is narratively the most mature and strongest among them is none other than Fate Zero. The main Fate series and the Grand Order anime have their strong suits and I highly recommend them as much as Fate Zero. However, Zero automatically qualifies for the list more due to its themes and how it's not afraid to go off in the deep end showing off the less glamorous side of storytelling. You've got characters who are heroes in the marginal sense of the world, a lot of betrayal and foul play and a story where it seems like the good guys don't always 
win in the end. It's not afraid to tell the story as is, and for every empty victory, your sense of anticipation only grows as you can't wait to find out what's next. Phase Zero is truly a show that you can make the most out of by stepping back and thinking. Yeah, it is fun to watch your favourite noble phantasms in play, and it's even more fun watching Gilgamesh in his prime just owning everyone, but the fights are barely the true focus of the series. This isn't UBW or FGO, and it's the more philosophical approach that has endeared Zero to many fans and non-fans alike. And that's also why it's what I feel to be the best the Fate series has been in anime form. Oh, that's a lot, isn't it? 20 titles for you to enjoy and hope that you like my list. If you've got more shows to recommend that fit the bill, feel free to let me know so that we can compare our lists. If you stayed until the end, then I thank you very much for that. I really hope to see you again, so make sure to drop a little like and a subscription. That's it for today, and I'll see you next time.